not to be the, the body language police or sports psychologist, but you just don't look right, man. He, you think he's still injured, man? Because uh, like he he wasn't even playing defense for he, the first half at all. He, like, he was he letting guys like he was stuck in quicksand, bro. That's what I was wondering. I was like, he doesn't look like he's moving well. His defense was a, an abomination in the first half. You know. Uh, in terms of his, of his help defense, he didn't look like he was moving too well. But then it's just his overall body language was 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 terrible. Even Alan Hahn called him out on the MSG post game. Under twenty three group. It's not as if you know this is an older veteran team and these are wins that uh, you know aren't resulting in something that you can build towards. Right. So you love to see that part of it, and you just wish that Julius Randle would join the party. You just <laughs> wish that he would enjoy it, too, because, you know, he walks off the court, he throws the basketball away. Your team just got a nice win at home. Exactly. Like, celebrate with your team. Celebrate with Alec Burks. You know, and too much of that is going to be focused on instead of the joy that Wally's talking about with Barrett, Quickly, Mitchell Robinson, Obi, and a lot oh. of the young guys. Uh, didn't help anybody up. Just walked off the court after the game. Like, I don't know, man. So, something... Something is just not right with that guy, bro. That's why I say, man, we talked about last show, the front office really has to evaluate if he's going to be back next season. If you try, because you can't have this type of body language, especially if he's one of your top players, right? If he's going to be paid like it, Mm -hmm. he's going to be considered a leader. This is not the type of stuff you want to see from someone who's considered a leader in the locker room. Yeah. You know, how do I handle the, the, the Randall situation? You know, like I said, it's tough, man, because I think selling low on him is risky, especially when you need to ultimately make that big trade that's going to net you a star, quote unquote, right? Because let's think of it this way. When you get rid of him outside of RJ, what do you really have? As a quote unquote, you know, win now, ready to go player, that can help your team if you're gonna make a trade. Like in in a Randall trade for Zion, Randall trade for whoever it is, you're still gonna have to add on picks and and a ton, right? But I but I think he he may get you there a little bit closer than if you just sell low on him for a bunch of uh, picks. And then you just have RJ here with your supporting cast. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I think it's, it's risky in terms of how you set up the next play if you just sell low. Yeah. But at the same time, yes, for the better of the team, to get Obi more playing time, wherever he's at mentally, also has fit on the starting unit with RJ, it's not working. Oh, it's very difficult because you paid him and someone's going to look at that contract and say, well, did he really perform this past season up to his contract value? Granted, the extension hasn't kicked in yet, but it's going to kick in next season. And the reason he got paid is what he did last season. Mm -hmm. Can he Mm -hmm. do something not exactly that, but close to it? Mm -hmm. But as you pointed out, it's the stuff that I think comes to the soft factor as what can he turn it around as a player? How is he going to gel with the locker room? How are you helping this team move forward? And is it addition by subtraction that if you remove him, that you actually get other players? Maybe Obi Toppin takes another leap next season. Maybe sure, Quentin possibly. Grimes. Maybe you get guys who start to embrace more of these minutes and become better players because of it. And then when you think you lost a player who had – a lot of value you actually get even more players who have more value right? right so i think that's another way you got to look at it and when evaluating this trade and that's why i am thankful that i'm not in this front office because my job would be on the line <laughs> trying to figure this out yeah uh for this off season so that's i think that's the biggest part and i know you don't want to necessarily trade a player at, a, at at their lowest because what do you get in return but I, to me, it comes down to how is the team performing? I'm always thinking about the team first because if someone's going to be a detriment to the team and mentally, like that will impact everybody else and how they play. 